where my dreams actually started. After my 10th standard, I was here at the MS Garware College doing my 11th and 12th standard. And uh, now the exam fever is going on. Everyone is planning to pursue something. You might be wondering, what is this slide doing over here? This was my actual dream. Till 12th standard, I wanted to pursue a career in petrochemical engineering. In fact, after my 12th standard, I did 15 days of engineering in Pune. And there was a, yeah, 15 days of engineering in Pune, that's right. But not everything we plan actually works out the way we decide to. There was a small turn in my life where 15 days in my engineering career, a very dear and near member of a family was diagnosed with cancer. Being an educated joint family, I could make out what we were going through. Everything, the pain, fear, the despair, frustration of losing a near and dear one. I was experiencing it. That was the point of time I happened to make a trip to Tata Memorial Hospital where late Dr. Shashank Shinde, who was treating my grandmother, I happened to meet him. And he put it up very nicely, saying that to engineer who machines she kai karnare, become a doctor, do something better than that. And that trip down from Mumbai to Pune actually sealed the fate. And my dad was very much pursuant. He said, we have everything. Why not do something better? We don't have a doctor in our family. It's better you become a doctor. So I switched over from engineering, took up medicine. But right from day one, the goal was very clear. I wanted to be an oncologist. I wanted to be a specialist in cancer because I had seen my family going through the pain of that. Though I do not have the charms of Shah Rukh Khan, but definitely my journey from Belgaum, which was where I did my MBBS, then to Tata Memorial Hospital, where I spent five and a half years, went to Christie, that's in UK. I was the second Indian to pass my membership of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh examination. <laughs> but no job in UK or my further continuation in Tata Memorial Hospital had a significant inclination. All I wanted to do was go back to my home city and treat my own family members. Because during that journey of 12, 13 years, from the time I took up medicine, almost seven members of my family were diagnosed with cancer. So probably destiny had something else in store for me. Destiny wanted me to pursue medicine to treat my own family members rather than taking care of patients first. During this 14 years of journey, during my medical career and education, I realized that cancer was not a problem only of my family. It was a global issue. Global issue wherein, although we were talking about India and the increasing incidence of cancer, but as compared to the global scenario, India fared much better. In India, the incidence of cancer is about 78 per 100,000 population, which is much less as compared to countries like Australia, Denmark, Norway, where it's almost 314 per 100,000 population, almost four times that of the Indian scenario. However, although the incidence of cancer over there is much higher than the Indian perspective, Indian scenario was entirely different. Uh, Indian scenario was 50% patients diagnosed in last stage. So, and our mentality was such that before starting the battle against malignancy, against the, with the treatment of our cancer, we were losing the battle mentally. To add on to that, the problem was about illiteracy and financial aspects. Today also, it's an unfortunate scenario that 40% of our patients have to go bankrupt to complete their treatment for cancer. A country like India, which is now aiming to be a superpower, unfortunately spends hardly 1.5% of its GDP on the health of the population. So, though the Western world, the incidence is high, the acceptance of malignancy and the outcomes are far better than the Indian scenario. Nevertheless, cancer cases are continuing to rise. In fact, there is a prediction there is an expected 45% increase in cancer cases by 2030. Now, why is it so? Because India is a young population. 70% of our population today is less than 30 years of age. An age group 
which is not the at-risk population for cancer. So as we are going to go on aging, the incidence and prevalence of cancer is going to go on increasing more. We have a widespread of cancers. In fact, except the hair and nails, every organ in the body is likely to have cancer. Being a diverse country, diverse in terms of religion, caste, cultures, we have a range of cancers. In fact, where in Mumbai we have in lung cancer the most common cancer, if you go to Mizoram, Sikkim, stomach cancer happens to be the most common cancer. Obviously, our food habits and availability of the natural resources is responsible for this disparity. These are a few of the drawings done by our childhood cancer patients. These drawings speak for themselves that tobacco, India has a cafeteria approach for tobacco. As compared to the Western world where tobacco is consumed only in the form of cigarette or cigar, I think in India if you want what type of tobacco consumption should be done, you will get a whole spectrum. The youngest childhood cancer patient whom I have operated for tobacco related cancer was a 9 year old kid, a convent school kid who was suffering from oral cancer, was used to consume the remains of the gutka packets which his father used to consume. There are many such families where tobacco consumption or alcohol consumption is done rampantly in front of kids and for every kid, his father or mother are the best ambassadors or they would put as the best stars in their life. So if a father is doing it, obviously the son feels that my dad is doing it, must be the best thing in the world. I need to follow his footsteps. Global warming. We are talking about global warming. We are taking some baby steps towards it. But what about the groundwater scenario? What about the scenario of increase in use of pesticides by our farming agriculturists? We have more the use of pesticides, definitely the groundwater arsenic lead levels are increasing and this groundwater or the milk consumption is actually making us more prone for various type of cancers. Cancer, be it the male population or the ladies, various cancers are there. As I said, almost all organs are uh, likely to be developing cancer as we are going to go uh, older or as we are going to be exposed to various environmental factors. How many of you all are aware that one in eight women is at risk of developing cancer during her lifetime, breast cancer, and unfortunately every wom one woman in eight minutes loses a battle because of cervical cancer, which happens to be a major menace in this country. Obesity. We always used to think that India is a poor country or India is a developing country where malnutrition is a problem. But as doctors, we are looking at a different set of malnutrition. It is not undernutrition, but it is overnutrition. We have a subset of a population where obesity is actually started playing a spoiled sport. And in fact, obesity is likely to overtake smoking as a potential cause of various cancers. This lady actually initiated a wonderful debate in the world. We always were talking about heredity as a cause of cancer. And heredity was something like some Jyotishi trying to give us a prediction that this is your risk of developing something. And that Jyotishi used to give us a solution for that. You do this puja and your problems will solve. But as doctors, 10 years ago, we knew that there was a hereditary risk of developing cancer. But what was the solution for that? It was like knowing a problem without of any concrete solution. However, after Angelina Jolie, who actually has become the face of various genetically predisposed cancers and the preventive measures for that, where BRCA1, BRCA2 genetic mutations, you can actually do something to alter these mutations. In fact, I started my practice in Nasik in 2000. The first seven years of my practice were treating about close to 10,000 patients I treated. It was something like a fractured treatment I was offering. Surgery in some place, chemotherapy in some other place, radiation, most of the patient never used to complete the treatment. Because inavailability of a comprehensive cancer center was the reason. Apart from this, the psychological aspects of cancer unfortunately remained unaddressed. When I started Curie Manota Cancer Center in 2007, it was the first comprehensive cancer center catering to a population of close to 6 million over a rural Maharashtra. Nine districts of North Maharashtra was what we are looking at. It started as a 35 bed surgical oncology nursing home with a clear aim. The aim was to change the attitudes from ignorance and fatalism to understanding and optimism. Because ignorance, ignorance was 
by large, it was gloomy, and people used to feel, why treat for cancer? Anyway, the patient is going to die. This was the scenario in which, unfortunately, today also prevails. We brought in technology. We brought in one of the best operation theatres. The first linear accelerator radiation machine outside Mumbai, Pune, for rest of Maharashtra was in Nasik. We got the PET CT scan. But all these things helped us to make the patients comfortable of the ease of going through treatment. First 10 years, we treated close to 40,000 patients. As I said, when I came to Nasik, it was for my family of, say, 20 people. But my family in 10 years, after starting Curie Manavta, had increased to 40,000 families. Before Curie Manavta, it was another 10,000 families. So almost 50,000 families I got connected to in my 16 years of academic career. We became the first NABH accredited cancer hospital in Maharashtra. NABH stands for the epitome of patient safety and the quality of care being given. More than 200 clinical trials, various aff affiliated to the US FDA, Malaysian FDA, European FDA, because until unless we are focused on science, until unless we look at growth, new research, we can never make a difference as far as the life of patients are concerned. With all these facts, Poverty or inability to pay for financial needs, for the health needs, remained a problem. And we treated almost 29,000 patients who were the below poverty line patients under various government schemes with the help of Chief Minister Relief Fund, the Prime Minister Relief Fund, Shirdi, Siddham, and like. So 29,000 patients were treated almost free of cost with the help of all these financial aids which we got. We got affiliated to the Maharashtra University of Health Sciences, again as the first private hospital in Maharashtra to be affiliated to the university for starting postgraduate fellowship courses in breast surgery, head and neck surgery, medical oncology, and clinical research. Because academics was growing along with patient care, which was there. We had various CSR initiatives where we realized that patients were being diagnosed with cancer. However, they were not coming forward for early treatment. Hence, we started the Arogya Sahili scheme in which we were going to the doorsteps of females and we have screened almost 16,000 ladies in less than two years period. And our goal is by 2020, we want to screen 50,000 ladies from North Maharashtra. We have diagnosed 740 ladies in primary stage because of these population-based initiatives. These were few of the activities which we did to ensure that ladies got sensitized towards the risk of cancer and they got the test done. During this journey, I came across, I wrote two books. One was in Marathi explaining about the causative factors of cancer and how to deal with cancer, the symptomatology and all, called Ashe Sankur in Marathi. And last year, I wrote my second book, which was of the Ashe Sankur, the untold success stories of cancer patients. Because success stories, unfortunately, were not coming in front of the population. These are a few of our ambassadors, as I would put it, that not every cancer patient looks uh, frail, thin, bald. We have beautiful models who have successfully won the battle against cancer. We have young stars who want to get into the Indian cricket team because they feel after battling cancer for four years, getting India into the Indian cricket team is no big game. He is sure that he is going to get into the Indian cricket team someday. 10 years, 40,000 patients. The dream started with treating patients from North Maharashtra. But in these 40,000 patients, we realize now the, in, the trust shown by patients is increasing. We are getting patients from Mumbai, out of Maharashtra. We are getting international patients also. So there was a time where we had to take a leap. The organization, we started with 35 people, with 35 beds, had grown to 75 beds. And now we have extended to 275 beds. This was something where now our focus was not on North Maharashtra, our focus is on a global. We want to make Manavta as a global trusted brand for cancer care, where our goal is that we want to bring everything. Every, every time I used to go abroad to see some cancer center, to attend some conference, I used to feel this is so good here. Why can't this be in Nasik? Why do my patients have to get treated in smaller setups? Why can't they have an international setup like scenario in a place like Nasik? So I got this for Nasik, where we have everything one can think about. Tomotherapy machine. There are only five machines in this country. But these five machines, Delhi has, Mumbai has, Chennai, Bangalore, fifth one is in Nasik. A tier three city can have a setup like a metropolitan city. And trust me, the first patient on tomotherapy whom we treated was from Dubai. 
because the engineer who installed the machine, he said this is one of the most beautiful rooms because there are 65 machines globally. But he said this has most beautiful ambience. So he posted the photograph on his Facebook page. And this patient who was from Dubai, he saw that Facebook page and he said, I want to come to for treatment in Nasik. And he had a wonderful experience with it. Now, the number of patients are increasing. The number of difficult patients were increasing. Because after treating 50,000 patients, we are seeing more and more patients who are young, more and more patients who have filled their initial lines of therapy outside. So where we started a center for difficult cancers with Datar Genetics Lab, we have started a center for difficult cancers with a goal of precision oncology, where we want to treat every patient separately, where when we wish to identify the markers which are responsible for causation of cancer, the responsible genetic alterations which cause the cancer to come back in a particular individual. So we do not wish to treat based on evidence, but we want to treat every patient separately. And that's why we have started the Center for Difficult Cancers. And uh, the resilient study, which would be one of its kind of study globally, has already enrolled 85 patients in NASIC. Now, while doing all these things, we realize that we have Center for Difficult Cancer, we have patients, we have technology. However, how do we take care of the mental pain, the psychological agony which the patients go through? So uh, while treating patients with the help of surgery, medical oncology, chemotherapy, radiation, everything, we started music therapy. We installed art therapy as a part of treatment. So every patient need not go through treatment with lot of pain. And in Indian context, if I would not be wrong if I say, most of us take illness as a type of punishment. Hospital ceilings are boring, I do understand. However, until unless you accept your illness, you cannot go through the treatment with a smile on your face. So we started art therapy, music therapy as a part of treatment wherein patients have realized now, okay, you can go through it. You can have this three months or four months of uh, treatment period where you can pursue your hobbies, which you have not been able to do over these last so many years because of your day-to-day -day course of activities, which you have been doing, taking your professional as well as personal commitments uh, on your shoulders. And this has really given us a big uh, relief. In the last 10 years, we have treated more than 700 kids with various types of cancers. And the major pain which I saw of these kids was not the injections or the surgical scars. Their pain was missing school, missing school, miss seeing their uh, fellow uh, colleagues, seeing their siblings going to school and they are not able to go to school. So we have started the first hospital school in this country, what we have started now. The idea is <laughs> while they go through the treatment, they will be doing their, pursuing their education in the hospital only. We have tied up with a couple of schools and they would be doing the curriculum as per their academic curriculum and while the treatment is on, they would be completing the schooling also. We have treatment, we have uh, psychological support, we have psycho-oncological support. However, in a country like India, we do not have the provisions for financial sources. Most of us, when you go to a hospital, we want the best treatment, but how do we take care of the financial aspects about it. A large number of uh, government schemes do not cover everything. It is a sorry state of affairs that only 4% of a population is covered under medically. So we realized that we wanted to give the best treatment. However, we had to take care of the financial burdens also. So we are again the first hospital in Maharashtra to start a 0% interest scheme for providing financial assistance to patients. Up to 5 lakh rupees of treatment at 0% interest for one year can be given to the patients. In less than 36 hours, the loan is sanctioned. You do not need any major uh, financial KYC is what I would put it. The idea was we wanted patients to complete the treatment. This journey, we are very sure, we are very confident saying that cancer is just a word, it is not a sentence. Cancer does not mean a death sentence where you need to put down all your armamentary. Everything is there and with that goal, we have a very clear statement. There is a can in cancer because we can beat it. And that is the way Manavata has been proceeding in the last 10 years. Thank you very much. <laughs>